they don't have the quality of water. And it is because it, it was not drilled properly, it was not flushed properly. Oh. The bark filling, you need uh, this kind of uh, small river stones. Yes. They were not properly washed. They have a lot of silt still inside. So all, all that one together gives us a quality which is not acceptable. You can't use it at all for drink. The drilling, let's say 15,000. Then we need solar equipment to it, the solar pump. It makes again around 12,000. The next thing is we need a water tower. I would propose around 10,000 liters, 10 cubic meters. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a PVC tank like that one, eight, nine, even 10,000 US dollars. The better one would be one support with a steel tank on top. They are, they are done in segments, mm -hmm. one meter by one meter, screwed right. together, the special ones, you see them all over. Yeah. Uh, and the good ones are the costing them quite a bit. If in Kenya or Uganda you have a square meter price of, let's, let's call it 350, then calculate times three. Three? Here. Three. Mm -hmm. That is averagely. Times three. Now, uh, a good amount is justified, but the other good amount is not justified. It's just to make business done. You pay in Juba for a bag of salmon. I would have then to calculate 65 pounds. You have to divide it according to the rate of exchange. But you know, you can say it's less than four per dollar. So uh, that would be uh, something like 20 something dollars. Doesn't matter, but you pay double when you have it here on the compound. So just there you see, you have for a bag of salmon, you pay 35, 40 dollars, it's crazy. If, if you want to open a small, in, in Kenya they call it Juakali, these are these uh, small uh, workshops where, the, okay, you, you need a welding machine, you need a generator because you don't have electricity here. But, or they can also find a good job because in, I guess in Southern Sudan, uh, uh, handicraft men are very much uh, needed and wanted, you see. I mean, I think these guys, they have a good chance later either to get their own small uh, workshop or to find employment either in urban areas in Rombek Wow or in, in uh, Juba so. even. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one of our commitments is to, to try and train Sudanese, to equip them in the long run to become part of this project. And uh, I remember when we came here, somebody said to me, just remember everybody in South Sudan is suffering from trauma. So the students themselves have been traumatized, either with primary or secondary trauma. And um, I think the effects of that can be seen too when you're working for a long time with students. And I don't think I'll ever forget people thanking us again and again, saying thank you for coming. Thank you for just being here. We thought the world had forgotten about us and we thought the Universal Church had forgotten about us. When we went to donors, we had to show our sustainability and we saw that the institution would be a base to reach out. Before I could come here, I'm very poor in managing time. And right now, as I talk, if one minute pass without me doing something beneficial, I feel guilty. And I've wasted the time. And I believe when you can budget your time very well, and then you'll be able to do something productive for your community and as well for the nation. The school boosts my morale to, to do that. I can participate in very many ways. So all in all, what I like to say is, this school will really determine who I will be in my future. It was very hard by the time when I arrived to CATI. To speak English was a problem, to write English was a problem. I could remember Sister Barbara used to teach us how to write ABC on the blackboard and it was a problem for me. I used to look on the thing just like growing. But lastly, I praise God, now I can speak and I can write. But nothing is impossible in this, in this CATI. When you commit yourself, you will do what is possible. But if you refuse or you fail to commit yourself, everything will be very hard. And it was very hard when I go to the class to start learning something like anatomy and physiology, it was a problem. But currently now it becomes like a small game with a small <laughs> interest.
when I come and I hear you speak, I'm so proud of you. And so proud of the, the, the growth that has happened and is happening in each of you. And it, it really strikes me your, your pride in your profession as a nurse or as a midwife, but that you also know that you are a leader. You're a, a leader in your community when you go back. You're a leader when you go out because you're making a difference.